we did a survey, 750 students, um, just a couple months ago and asked them, and this is current data. First of all, sexting out of control. We're talking 40%. I mean, it was like, I, I was shocked and like, we are the walled garden and that's how, how crazy what's going on is the kids are aware of how toxic this stuff is. I, I said, Hey, what would you tell your parents? over and over and over again they wrote let like comments to their parents and saying love me do something stop like get into this like do be involved in my life and put up boundaries for me and we asked this question if you could turn off social media and the world just never had it never will have it who would do that and 96 percent of the students said i don't want it like i don't need it so there's you know a few years ago there wasn't an awareness now people are aware but there's no solutions. The solutions are budding. We did this thing called a town detox and we challenged some students and a handful of them, many of them stepped up and said, yeah, I want to use a wireless phone for the semester. One of the girls two weeks in told her teacher, this is the first time I've actually seen the sunrise in like years <laughs> because I woke up and I walked outside and like, there's something very profound in that, in those little moments. And we've got hundreds of them um that are there and those are, those are small ones with kids but also just on the protection side um we had a husband who cheated on his wife and wanted to rebuild trust and got a wise phone and he said here's the code you can see anything and everything and we we had uh un, you know undeletable message history and phone calls and so this was his primary device and over years like it's made a meaningful impact on their marriage in that very very difficult journey and rebuilding trust. My favorite gain in going to the Wise Phone was at the playground with my kids, not having eat work emails to look at potentially. Instead, my Wise Phone doesn't do that. And so I could just play with my kids distraction free. And to me, it's it's actually one of the greatest gifts the Wise Phone gave me. We also had an ex-Google product manager come in and she's been out of Google for about 10, 15 years. I don't know exactly, but she's been a consultant doing product research for people. So she's seen lots of companies, not just Google. And so she conducted uh, around 10 user interviews uh, right here in the office. And she talked to them and she, she got some quotes and saw the sincerity of how transformative wise phone was in the lives of people using it. And she got one quote that said, Hey, the techless team is possibly the most important team in the country right now, what they're building. Um, and the, I don't think anyone understands what's going on here, but she was so moved by the feedback from those people that she was tearing up in the user interviews. And she says, I've never done this. I never did it in Google. I've been doing this for, for a decade with other companies. And this is the first time in my life, this very statistical engineering, factual data-driven woman teared up um, because of the transformational power of what was going on consistently. We're talking 50 multi-hour user interviews. The, the words that came out of everyone's mouth was feelings of freedom and peace. Like we can almost guarantee it at this point. Uh, that it's like, if, it, if you don't have feel, feelings of freedom and peace, then like return the phone and you probably didn't actually use it is where we're at. <laughs> um, so, so that's the universal transition for people and it's deep life transition it's not like oh i go on a, a diet for two minutes or two days and then it's like no this is like my life is permanently changed type of stuff which is super exciting um but then but then i get most excited about the little tiny moments like you mentioned the playground right i've known people who are now in their kind of young adult years who spent their their teenage years drowning in a smartphone and drowning in the internet and they they do have this existential like desire to be free of it in some sense and so they're switching to these there's a small trend but i yeah. think the wise phone is going to fit into that of people needing to like detach and take a break so describe to us what this phone does. all right i'll show you my phone um it's kind of blown out let me yeah okay so there's my phone. I use it. I run the company and I'm using a wise phone. Um, yeah, there you go. I love it. You turned yours in dark mode. <laughs> I'm in yeah, I did mode. white before uh, that, but I've decided to go dark for, yeah, I don't know. I'm playing around with it. I love it. Um, so, okay. Why I'll, I'll tell you one thing. Wise phone one was a minimalist phone. It was for digital minimalists who want to take a, a deep dive into like hard boundaries around life. And wise phone one had like eight, nine apps. We built them from the ground up calling, texting, clock, calculator, maps, camera, that was it. Um, Wise Phone 2, we did all this user research and said, hey, that's really high. That's minimalist. And then there's smartphones. Um, what the world wants and needs is actually something halfway in between. And so we're like literally trying to create a new product category. We're calling a healthy phone. Um, and it's halfway between a minimalist phone and a smartphone. And so we allow third-party tools. 
but we are curating them very carefully. Um, and we are continuing to develop technology literally day by day, like <laughs> that is adding to our sophistication and our boundaries around what is good, that middle. Yeah, there you go. And so we have something called the tool drawer where we're allowing certain third party apps that are like, Hey, I need Uber or, uh, I need to use the bus, uh, the bus app for my kid to get on the bus. And so there's some very basic low hanging fruit things that don't destroy you. They don't eat away your soul and we're allowing those tools, um, but we're staying away from social media. We're staying away from solo media. That's where you look at the screen by yourself and just absorb content. Um, and then no access to anything explicit, you know, staying away from addictive stuff. So that's kind of where we're drawing the line and we're parsing this out um, and just, you know, a thou like I said, a thousand tiny little design decisions, but there's some core fundamental principles that are building into it. But that's the overview of Wise Phone 2. Yeah, I mean, some of the things that I've liked from the improvement from the Wise Phone 1 to the Wise Phone 2 would be like one one thing is that the maps are working way better. Like, yeah, like the Wise Phone 1, the maps actually got me to where I wanted to go, which was great. But like if I wanted to say something like, hey, take me to all the Taco Bells like in my vicinity, I had a hard time doing that. I'm yeah. sure there was a way to do it. But I'm again a tech, a, a digital minimalist. I'm not very good at figuring yeah. stuff out. Yeah, well, and and yeah, and we built the first version of the maps. I mean, we had our own maps app, and we were paying you know six bucks a month for API calls per user. I mean, just crazy. Um, but uh, that we we just decided, you know what? We did a lot of research. People care about certain kinds of privacy, but not other certain kinds of privacy. And so we have a different maps app now that just it's a little more user friendly and no one's complained at all except for the yeah. like one percent of one percent that are like i don't want you to so anyways yeah it's like when i'm out of town with my family and i need to go find my hotel and i need to go yeah. find a place to eat and i need to do those kind of basic tasks yep um this wise phone too i can already tell is going to be a lot more of a smoother basic process yeah yeah totally i mean I, I traveled uh just recently i traveled to london and back navigated all around london everything i needed no no issue and i also like the camera on the wise phone too it's even has portrait mode. So taking a picture of the family and being able to send it to my wife or playing with the kids on the playground, I'm not distracted, but she might be like, Hey, send me a photo of you playing with the kids. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and this phone well, looks, it looks really great. So it's good. Cool. Thank I can tell you the two things that statistically people want, they love the, they, they want camera and they want battery life. And so our battery, just because we're running such a light OS, it's like, I get three days, sometimes five, if I don't use it that much, but like, I'm not, this is not a full, like for you type of thing. If you're using it a whole lot, you're going to get standard, standard usage, but it's, yeah. It's definitely those two things matter. I got a link below the interview. And again, if you do get to the point where like, I, I do want to buy one of these, you can save 40 bucks through my discount code and it'll take you straight there. It would be at least fun to have one person in your family using it and, and exploring it. Love the conversation. Love what you're about and what you're doing um, and keep asking the questions and challenging people to live a little more deeply, a little more intentionally. So thank you. <laughs>